Hello YouTube, this is the Alpha Hunter here, and thank you all very much for watching this first video of mine. Today I want to talk about a game called Changed by the creator, according to Steam, Dragon Snow. Specifically, it's history. What we know, what we don't know, and what we can probably make up. Now, I got into a discussion with someone else in the comments section of the original soundtrack video, and I wanted to create a video to help it kind of explain everything that I see. I hope all of you do enjoy what I have to say, and let me know what you think in the comments below. What can I do to improve? What do you think I'm flawed in thinking about? Just generally, what do you think of my video? What do you think of what I had to offer? And I want to say thank you all very much for viewing this. Now, I do need to warn you before heading in, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Let's begin. First things first, we've got to talk about the virus. This is what caused all of the events to go down, and this is what eventually caused Colin, the main character you play as, to awaken and begin exploring the facility. It's a very deadly virus due to the fact that it's wiping out the human population rapidly. In about five years, and I'll get back to that, I'm not done with the five years thing yet, but in, the, in about five years it wiped out everyone but Dr. K, the Elite, and Colin. This virus has been able to infiltrate and lie dormant inside all of the humans and is somehow activated and when activated starts causing death, usually over time if I remember viruses correctly. Most of them generally kill you over time. It's a slow and painful death. But because of the rapid decrease in the human population in the game, it was made a high priority to study this virus, figure out how it works, and to find a cure or a counter to it. They studied it for a long time, for it to be five years, and they found a way and everything's just still kind of going crazy. They found the cure to be the latex that they have created, forming these latex monsters. And then you also have K's drug, which is which I'll get back to in a later bit. And this virus, we have no idea where it came from. We have no idea what it's called, nor do we have an exact idea of how it's being transferred everywhere. We don't know how it's spreading. We have no idea. Now, there is the notion of animals, due to the implications that it's easier to treat in animals. I Now, some may say, okay, some of the animals were infected with it, and I can see that. I can also see the fact that the scientists were taking animals and injecting them with the virus to see why they're not getting sick with this, and effective counters, which would explain why it's easier to treat in animals rather than in humans. Now for the facility that you start in. We do know that it's a tall tower or a tower-like structure. I think it's like a skyscraper almost. Due to the fact that you can look around from a balcony and see all of the ruin that, it, that the town is in. Then you also have to just to pick on the elephant in the room, know that this is the place where the where the latex is held and studied. Held because you encounter a lot of them on your escape, and also because of the you know that they're being studied due to the fact that there's many photos and <clears throat> papers on the wall talking about this. It's also another elephant in the room, and kind of ruin. It's not in a good condition whatsoever. You've got leaking puddles, you've got leaks, puddles, power outages, flooded parts, boxes all over the place, and it's just not in a good condition whatsoever. Now this thing has a power generator, a backup power generator, mind you, 
ironically near some puddles and puddles of water. I would say kind of like a lake or a pond, but I don't think that's a good description. It's just a lot of water. I'll call it a pond. So near ponds of water. And it's also odd that the password is 1234. Just for those who need to get through that part of the level. And it's noticed that it's been off for almost five years, 4.9 and so on. Meaning that this facility has been running on external power source for almost five years until that failed. And because of the failure in power, your cabin was deactivated and you were awakened. And this facility, it's possible that the virus was studied here due to the fact that many of the latex is around and vir the virus is mentioned. We also think that case drug is possibly made in this facility. We do know that there is a camera system all over the facility that Dr. K watches you over. That's how he knows about your relationship with a black latex called Pearl that you befriend. Now be careful, you want to be a good friend with him. There's also a communication array or some communication line between Dr. K and the elite who's hidden somewhere out in the world. We don't know how they're alive, we don't know where they are, all we know is that they're the elite, assumingly rich and powerful, and that they're funding the facility. We don't know exactly how tall it is. Like I said, I think it's like a miniature skyscraper. It's almost as tall as one. In order for you to see out into all of the town and just in utter ruins. Also, we don't know exactly what outside power has been fueling it. I can only assume an electrical power grid somewhere out there. But I don't know why they decided to depend on stuff going on out there all that power only to have it fail it's a stupid move in my part well in my mind and the scientists there had to have been many more than just dr. K and dr. K says the other scientists during the riots well I'm the only one that's left I'll get to the riots next but I also do want to make note that Lynn, or Colin, he's also a kidnap victim, and that's proven towards the beginning. He remembers him being kidnapped. But that'll be my next point. Thirdly, I really want to talk about the kidnapping. We know that there is kidnapping due to the fact that Colin remembers himself being kidnapped and then placed into this cryotube-like container. And I'm saying cryotube because when I look at that thing, I really start to think of the Halo 5 cryotube, or at least just the Halo cryotube. This thing is some kind of preserver. Colin must be older than he is, at least by five years, must be older than he looks like. Some say he's 21, some say, I don't know, Maybe five, like 15 or something. I think he's, I think he's closer to around 10 or 12 years old. Just by his height, but I could be mistaken. We don't really know how old he is. Now, I assume he's not the only kidnapped victim, because why would you waste your time with just one? Why not get many? You may be wondering, why are they kidnapping kids or people in general? I think it's because of the riots, or that the riots and the kidnapping were intertwined. One was the cause of the other. I think over time, as they were taking volunteers, and the volunteers would only make sense for the beginning, that would explain why there are some other interesting, different, interestingly different people in all of the photos that are, that are seen. It's possible that they were volunteers, and then some of them were actually victims forced to undergo all of this changing by the latex monsters. Now, 
I don't know about you, but I would be freaking terrified if this thing just comes at me and just starts taking me over, controlling me. And I think that's what happened. Eventually, the volunteers started to talk about what was going on. I think maybe one of them have escaped. It will escape the facility and started telling the town. And I think they first try something peaceful, like completely boycotting. When the scientists asked for volunteers to help out, they just started to boycott and try to avoid that kind of fate. So desperate times call for desperate measures, and they sent scientists out in the night to, or generally anybody that they could, out in the night and started kidnapping so that they could have the test subjects they need to continue further research and save the, ra the human race. Now, we do know that the riots took place inside the facility. We know that because K confirms that the riots were the cause of the viral detection machines used to detect viruses. We know that that's the, the riots are the main cause that it's destroyed, that it won't be repaired. I believe that the riots generally cause the destruction of some of the tower. And I do believe the riots are the cause of the destruction of the town. And that they are doing it because of the basically mistreatment and the kidnapping. Get up in arms all about it. Like I said, they tend to be intertwined, but I have no idea, and I think the community as well. The change community and I have no idea exactly if this is happening at the same time or if one's the cause of the other. I think they're both causes for each other. And because riots tend to be violent, I think some of the some of the rioters were killed as well. Really noted that the scientists were killed too because of the riots. The scientists we know were killed or eventually killed during the riots. And that the rioters may have also been killed during the riot. Let's see here. And because of all of this rioting, it is possible that the latex managed to escape or were intentionally set free. I Me, mean, I think it was just reckless with the rioters going around destroying everything in protest that they may have also shut down the failsafe protocols for the latex containers and their eventual release, which caused a lot of quote-unquote transferring. That's what the game calls it. And the preservers, I want to call them preservers because you really want to have your subjects in either prime or constant condition. So having them basically asleep, knocked out, which is generally what you wake up from, being like knocked out or asleep and preserved, you would be able to be tested on later. Like We don't know the origins exactly of the riots, I can only assume, and that's what I've been doing. We don't know the amount of casualties nor the amount of kidnap victims that there were because of both of these, or <clears throat> because of both of these, my apologies. And the timing, we have no idea when exactly one happened and the other. It could be that the kidnapping still continued after the riots. I mean, if I was a scientist and some of my equipment was destroyed and all of this, I'd try to stay away from continuing to kidnap anyone until we've got our facility not only in lockdown, but back in control. But that is just me. And then for the final part, we'll talk about next. If you thought this video is long enough, well, this part is still mind boggling me about how long I'm gonna have to discuss this. We're now going to be talking about the latex monsters that you encounter as well as Kay's drug, one of the biggest, most obvious things that need to be talked about. I got to them last because I need to put up a backstory so that some things can explain itself. Now, here's the list of what we know. It's a parasite, or it has parasitic nature, due to the fact that, as Pearl says, 
that it needs a host. Dr. K also confirms this, saying that these things need a host in order to continue to survive. It has a drive to change whomever and whatever it takes. It's been known to be in some kind of milk pudding goo form. It also has some kind of gas form due to the fact that you go through several canisters at one point of these things that will eventually transfer you. It also has a furry form, and I'm quoting furry because I can't quite exactly say things the way I intend to. My original idea of calling it was these anthropomorphic animal-like forms, and so furry for short. Some of them look like wolves, some of them look like sharks, some of them look like fish, some of them look like cats. I think one of them was actually a bobcat. But they have many different forms, and because of the aquatic forms, they have resilience to water, which will allow them to basically not be taken apart by the water's acid part. Because, it's in, because it has a goo form, it can also travel through vents and small places and through small cracks. So generally when you're out and about, try to avoid the vents, but sometimes you just need to get to the vents, and it happens. It's also resilient to the virus. It's made to be a counter. So when you're taken by this, and I'm probably going to use taken or transferred or changed to describe what happens. So when you're taken by this latex, it covers you and turns into its own form. And the virus is either kept dormant or exterminated, and any outside virus that comes to try to take you, or any activating factors are nullified. This also has implications for taking you over for bodily manipulation, but most of all, genetic mutation. And this is especially true for Dr. K's drug. For the latex, you can encounter some where you're being changed, your body's changing, your bone structure's changing. In fact, for one of them, your bones are creaking. I don't know about you, but that kind of sounds painful. But you said it doesn't hurt. It's just a strange feeling, which leads me to believe that it also has an anesthetic part or pain numbing part. And it also has to deal with dopamine manipulation. And I say dopamine, but I really mean like liking. It, it does mention that you actually kind of like it to some degree. So I think it also manipulates your mind as well when that happens. Because if you're still panicking on the inside while having it, it's not going to hold you for very long. And that can be proven by the many times you've escaped being caught by those things. So yeah, you can't escape them, you just have to be very careful when you do that. I really want to talk about this mind wiping. It's mentioned by Pearl and Dr. K that if you're taken over by this latex monster or these latex creatures, that you would lose yourself. You would lose all of the memories that hold you and would be replaced by this latex instinct. The latex is instinct. They need to believe that, yes, it's just further backing up that it's manipulating your mind. It also has several other odd forms that I want that I want to point out. One of the one of the four pictures shows well, one of the many groups of pictures and sets of four show a guy putting on a jacket and becoming more of a leopard-like creature. I think that the latex took the form of a jacket, and that just further proves that it can mock whatever it's taking, and that it consumed him. And he became this latex monster leopard thing. Sorry, it's just mind-boggling just to think. Also, you can encounter a mask during the game where if you touch it, 
it attaches itself to you and you get covered in black latex consuming you and that's kind of disturbing as well but most of all and this is prominent through several parts of the game these crystals have the ability to transfer you to change you into one of them Per oh, I'm looking at the snow, and I just remember. At one point, when you cross a pond of water, Pearl mentions that he doesn't like himself getting wet. He says, yes, I'm a latex monster, but the outside is actual fur. And that got me thinking. They must have their own kind of genes, their own type of genetics, in order to be able to have that kind of form. They even mention that there's not much of a good relationship between all of the latex. Pearl is very hesitant to go into the white latex territory because they are natural enemies. And I'm thinking, that's kind of odd. I thought all the latex generally didn't care about each other. They're just in it for getting a host. And that's kind of odd. It's kind of odd that they would do something like that, but interesting too. As mentioned before, that they never really escaped the facility. I mean, I don't think they were programmed to be very intelligent, but I do think they are intelligent enough to think about human life or a host. Taking each other is kind of odd, and if you're trying to talk to me about dazed, well, let's just say that... Dragon Snow, the creator of the game, said that he's taking days and reworking it. He's starting over for the second game. So all of what Dazed has to say, I'm going to leave out of the discussion. And so that way we can kind of keep some consistency in what I'm talking about. Let's see here. It rapidly multiplies on the host. And that's mentioned because if you barely even touch it. It will get on you, rapidly multiply, and cover you quickly. I find that kind of disturbing too. I, the character and even I would just panic and try to shake it off as if it's like water on you. But it wouldn't work like that. It would just rapidly multiply all the way up your arm and consume your body. And like I said, it's an anesthetic because when your body is changing to match what the latex wants to transform you into, you have to imagine the kind of pain someone would have to, have to go through. I feel pity for all of those test subjects. Oh my dear lord. They have the possibility of gaining knowledge. And I say possible because we know Puro, who's a black latex monster, who originally had this instinct, is found in a library reading books. And the books are just piled on top of each other in a messy pile. So that means he has to have some sort of intelligence to understand how to read, how to talk, how to understand nuance, and all of that kind of fun jazz that you would need in order to read books. They also have a strange ability to eat each other. And I'm keeping that as a possibility, though we do know that Pearl, at one point, if you get caught by latex, will take it off of you, and the description says that he eats it. So I wonder if that empowers them, or gives them more knowledge, or what purpose does it serve for taking latex and consuming it. It, it also seems to contain the virus. I've mentioned this before, but it seems that when it's taking over, it prevents the virus from being activated or cures the virus at best and at opt optimistic levels. And it also prevents the virus from entering the body. I kind of find that hard to believe for it not being able to enter the body since there's several ways it can do that but it generally seems to be an effective counter against the virus, if not a cure. 
As for Kay's drug, it's known that it takes a while for it to settle in you. Due to the fact that K has to basically knock you out or make you fall asleep while having that drug injected into you. And it's just a slow drip of the drug going from an IV bag into your bloodstream. And it will eventually change you into a wolf, I believe. And you would still have your mind intact. I think that was the goal of the scientist, create an effective cure or counter while still retaining the host's memory. And I think they knew that the memory was gone by the fact that these latex creatures really kind of lost their minds. And that this drug was able to be made because of all of these samples and all of the information gathered about it. Now, Dr. K said that he found a cure and or cure or a counter and sent it over to the elite. He told them that this we have a cure, we have something to help. And then is upset by the fact that you awoke, which is entirely beyond you, and it's not even your fault that you're there. But he's mad that you're there and you're about to escape and for some odd reason, say that you're going to ruin the plan and everything's going to be screwed. It's unknown about how exactly it messes with the mind. I think it just infiltrates the mind and because of the change, it modifies the hormones and the neurotransmitters within the mind. And also, I'm really not quite sure how it has its own central nervous system. The closest thing I can compare this latex to is Venom from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Venom has its own purpose, to consume a host and be able to fight all of these big old creatures, cause destruction and mayhem. But while they are similar, there are differences, they're made for different purposes. They generally have different reasons and different ways of going about these things and doing their mission. Also made a note that it's possible, but it's not quite known if that this latex is the reason why the, vir why the virus is able to be exactly countered. It's not known why or how. All knows that it does. It's also known that it may have been the cause of the riots, but it's definitely the cause for the kidnapping. This latex is the advancement of the scientific knowledge. And so having victims of kidnapping so they can test it on is definitely a reason why the latex would be a cause for the kidnapping. But as for the cause of the riots, I think it'd be indirectly at best, and if not, just somehow related. And those are all four points of view that I wanted to talk about to let you know what we do know, what's possible, and what we don't exactly know. And now, for my take on the story of Changed. It all began with the virus. This unknown virus infiltrated into most of the human population and remained dormant and inactive. Somehow, in some way, some moron triggered the virus to become active. And it began to activate all across the globe. People started dying, I believe, by the thousands every day. This turned into a worldwide, completely global crisis. This thing is worse than tuberculosis. And now, almost every scientist there is, biochemists, chemists, biologists, and all other scientists involved, are now working hard to find out what way can we counter this. They are too slow. Many of them keep dying day after day and the scientists soon fall victim to this virus, themselves infected. 
in this one small town, presumably the last place infected, people begin to start dying, first by groups of ten, then hundreds. The scientists there start to discover something surprising. They can easily cure it in animals. Their methods of how they found that out is unknown, but they know they can cure it in animals. So began the race against time to find a way to modify the human genetics to be more animalistic and thus cure or counter. They begin researching. They are working even harder, double time. Some of the people begin volunteering in their efforts to try to find the cure. They eventually create the latex that we now know and kind of despise. This latex is the last hope of humanity. When they came out saying, we are close to a cure, we need people to help us find it. Many from the town began volunteering, themselves being taken in voluntarily and being subjected to being changed and taken by the parasite of the latex. They are changed. They lost their minds. They began panicking, screaming all until they were consumed. They modified the latex more and more as they continued and continued to try to find the cure. Those failed samples were locked up, preserved, and kept away. The host soon to be consumed and die. Word gets out about what's going on inside of this laboratory this facility, and everyone begins to get upset. They are fearful. They're hearing that they're basically killing their own townsfolk. And so they begin preventing people from volunteering, saying, don't do that. You, you will die, and you will never help them find the cure. The scientists and everyone else in the facility begin to get desperate. They're running out of things and test subjects to try in order to find the cure. And as desperate times call for desperate measures, they begin kidnapping children and other defenseless people. You, the character, Colin, are a victim of such things. People get up in arms when they realize that they're taking people. They're angered, infuriated. They take to the streets and begin the riot. The town begins to get destroyed as the police fail. The town begins to get burned, get destroyed, and the facility, it's done for. It seemingly is done for. The rioters enter the building caused mayhem, destroyed parts of the facility, and ruined a lot of the experiments, and setting them recklessly free. The scientists begin to panic, the guards begin to panic, anybody out there still awake and alive is panicking and fighting. Dr. K decides to take cover and hide. The scientists, the rest of them, consider him foolish but in the end, they themselves no longer are alive at the end of the riots. The riots are quelled by the police force and by the latex, as well as the virus. The equipment to detect the virus has been destroyed, along with parts of the facility. And Dr. K opens himself out of his hiding place and realizes he's the only one left. He roams the facility, trying to check on everything. Is everybody okay? Am I the last remaining? What happened? And some of the latex begin attacking him. 
he fled himself until he was in a safe place and began studying them, realizing that he cannot do anything else. He manages to get in contact with the outside world, the elite, who have hid themselves and are getting protected from the virus. They don't have long and they need to find a cure quickly. Five years passed. All of this. Power finally shuts down as there is no one to keep this facility's power running. Dr. K knows he's going to have to go out there and fix it himself. But doesn't want to risk getting taken by the latex that roam the facility. And he accidentally discovers a breakthrough. He has now created a drug that will change himself to be resilient to the virus and still contain his consciousness himself. He injects himself with it, waiting out through all of the time until he finally is able to move again. He takes a look at himself and puts on his gas mask and his lab coat and begins to get to work. He comes back after a while and checks the security footage. Is everything running? He sends a message to the elite that, hey, I have found a cure. This facility's not in good condition, but I have found a cure. It is now time for me to start making this and sending it over to you. He gets an alert midway through the message that a cabin has been deactivated and is now opened. He notices you, the player, Colin, wandering around the facility trying to figure out what's going on and how do I get out of here. Colin avoids all of these latex and soon encounters Pearl. He's a Colin is afraid at first, but Pearl proves himself to be sentient and attempts to help him. He gives him the passcode to a nearby door and begins following him after a while. Colin and Pearl soon develop a relationship that forms a strong bond between them. Pearl soon himself wants to escape the facility, wants to know humans and see the world without being trapped inside the facility and looking at it from a balcony. He travels through, helping to protect and help the human escape. He soon has to face Dr. K, who ambushes Colin and locks the door. Dr. K puts Colin in a containment area behind some glass that none of the latex has been able to break. Dr. K goes back into his place, into where he ambushed Colin, and fights off Pearl. Colin manages to escape with the help of a sweeper bot, or a cleaner bot, and finds Dr. K and Pearl on the ground out like a light. He goes to Pearl and mourns as if Pearl is defeated and dead. And Colin apologizes seemingly for having to put Pearl through this. Pearl awakens and surprises Colin and soon it brings relief to Colin that Pearl is still alive. Dr. Case also begins to wake up, but groggily and in pain. He pleads Colin not to continue on. He, re he tries to remind him about what's been going on, but just begs him, don't, don't continue. Pearl and Colin, still duty bound to their goal, continue anyway. After going through several different territories and being surrounded a few times, and having to go through crystals, which Pearl eventually carried Colin through, 
they wind up at the receptionist desk at the at floor one. Before they're able to escape, Dr. K intercepts them. He tells them about what's been going on, about the virus, about the riots and how he's the last left, and that he has found a cure, but now everything's about to be ruined by Colin about to escape from the facility. Pearl and Dr. K begin to argue about what happens next, and soon it's up to Colin to decide. Colin takes time, but even when he's supposed to say something, he shakes his head as if uncertain. And then Dr. K comes up with a compromise. I'll give you the drug that I used to make me. You will change from a human to what I look like, or to something similar to me. But you won't have to worry about the virus, and you'll be able to leave. Pearl disagrees, and almost decides it for Colin, but Colin decides that he's going to accept the treatment. Colin undergoes the treatment under Pearl's watch. Days and days pass. Colin wakes up from a nightmare and finds Pearl over him. Pearl is happy that he's awake and helps with Colin's changes, lets him know about what's going on, and tries to make sure nothing horrible happened to him. Dr. K comes by saying that everything is successful, you have been changed, and now you're resilient to the virus, and while you were asleep I created something similar to a human so that Pearl can take, and now he no longer needs a host. You two can now go out. Dr. K, while feeling some slight loneliness and sorrow that the only ones left who he's able to talk to is now set free, still is grateful that Colin agreed to this compromise. Colin is grateful that he's able to escape and not have to be chased down or worry about the virus, and Pearl's just happy that they're leaving. They head out into the town, and Colin has a hard time adjusting to his new body. It's more powerful than he thought, and he kept getting himself hurt by tripping or mistaking jumps. He soon sets down next to Pearl in the midst of a hill nearby the town, far away from the tower, as they watch the sunrise. And they are both happy. That is my view of the story of Changed, and I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment. If you want to join my pack, please subscribe. Tell me what you think. Like or dislike, I'm here to help bring some new ideas to the forefront of the table. And now thank you all very much for watching, and good hunting.